goodness. I don't know what to say. Uh, I, I, well, I'll say this much. We're gonna be wearing a lot of blue on the vlog in the coming months. Oh my goodness, this is uh, way more than I expected. I'm ever grateful. And I was seriously considering buying a little more uh, winter running gear in the not so distant future because it's starting to get cold. It snowed yesterday, uh, two days ago here in Denver, but I think I'm set now. Oh my goodness, again, a shout out to USA Track and Field, Nike providing all of this goodness here. I'm just blown away and again, remaining grateful um, all the time. So, okay, uh, we're gonna talk about running gear that I have been trying and testing for frankly months now and I just have not had the chance to talk with all of you about. So we're gonna do something a little different here in, uh, in a minute. I just gotta clear all this off. Oh yeah, and I'm gonna test all this uh, tomorrow, in tomorrow's vlog, I frankly ran out of time today just unpacking and laying it all out, laying it all out. So I will try on the gear in tomorrow's vlog. Oh my goodness. Ah, you guys are the best. You're the best. Keeping me honest, keeping me going, get me to the mountain, to Argentina for the World Mountain Running Championships. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, everyone, it's a long overdue vlog talking about running gear. Oh yeah, you know how much we love running gear here on the channel. And uh, let's see, gonna ask the question of the day here in a minute, but I'm filming in the house right now, not in the studio because in the studio, I have to stand up and I'm trying to preserve my legs as much as possible uh, for New York City in about eight days from now, seven days from now. Um, so that's why I'm sitting in here to talk to you, yes, about running gear that spans many different running gear categories. And that's the question of the day. What, uh, what category of running gear are you most excited about or intrigued about in let's say the next three to four months, between now and let's say early January, 2020? And it could be running socks, running shoes, outerwear, recovery gear, recovery uh, supplements or food. Um, sunglasses, uh, it could be watches, uh, running gear tech, all of these different categories that are out there. So if I had to pick one, hmm, I do love running recovery gear, I must say. That would probably be my choice, but let us know down in the comments, that would be amazing. Okay, let's dive in. We're gonna run through all this as, uh, as, as efficient as possible. I'm not gonna go into as much detail as I usually would about the running shoes uh, because I'm busy, so I, with all the travel, all the races, it's very exciting, but it's definitely, I've noticed, cut into my time. And remember when I was doing the double publishing in July and August, the vlog and running shoe reviews, I just, eh, it's been a little difficult lately with all the travel. So that's why I'm doing a catch-all, catch-up vlog right now. Let's go. Okay, starting over here on the left, we've got my Smith Chroma Pop Max sunglasses. You know how much I love these. Um, I actually got these on sale. I think they're still expensive though. I, I realize sunglasses break, you lose them. Um, I love these because of the how big the lenses are and my eyes are pretty sensitive to the sun, but these are my Smith Chroma Pop Max sunglasses. I just love them, pretty durable. And yes, the um, if I can pop them off there, there we go. So the arm actually pops off in case you step on them. I've dropped them, stepped on them a couple times, and the, the arm does not break, it just pops off. So it's a really nice design uh, for that. And as far as the lenses go, they're very dirty right now, but not too many scratches, because I realize as you buy expensive sunglasses, but then they get scratched, that's no fun. Um, so anyway, love these so, so much. Okay, over here, the stability disc from Power Systems. This is to work on my foot strength, especially, and my lower ankle. I really, my, my massage therapist knows, I have a few little aches and pains, some niggles in my feet, and that has always been my, my weak point with the plantar fasciitis, the stress fractures. So I'm just, I just picked this up maybe a month ago. I should have picked this up 10 years ago. And do I do ankle rotations in the gym, but now I can do them at my house all the time. Ankle rotations, uh, balance exercises, so many different ways to use this stability disc, but it does not come with a pump. Just so you know, I had to go to Target and pick up this you know, $6 pump. So uh, if it'll arrive at your house uh, flat if you order it. 
uh, from Amazon, just so you know. Okay, moving on, here we go to, oh man. I, so at the end of 2019, I will do a vlog all about the best running gear of 2019. I don't know how anything is gonna trump the Hyper, I can never remember the name, the Hyper Ice Viper 2.0. This is the vibrating, um, uh, foam roller and it's amazing. You all know how much I use this every single day and it's just incredible. So Hyper Ice Viper 2.0, it might go down as my 2019 running gear of the year item, um, if that makes sense. Okay, moving on. Here we go. I think I'll save the watches for here in one second. Let's jump to the Unived Elite Recovery Mix. Uh, this is the creamy vanilla flavor and over here we've got the cocoa turmeric flavor. So I was running 100 plus mile weeks leading into Amsterdam and I was tired and I was, I was tired. And immediately after the runs, especially the long runs, you all saw me how much I drank one of these packets every single day. And is it working? At the end of the day, um, it's hard to really, really, really know. But I must say, I felt better. And I was able to train at 100 plus mile weeks for three or four weeks leading into Amsterdam. And um, would I have been able to do it without those uh, recovery mixes? Yes, I probably would have been able to, but I'm telling you, I felt better after drinking these recovery mixes. So I'm a fan, I'm gonna continue to use them. And as far as a few uh, ingredients real quick, I mean, it's a four to one carbohydrate to protein ratio, which I know is good for recovery. Um, it's got 610 milligrams of electrolytes, 100 uh, NCG of vitamin K27 for muscle cramp prevention and cardiorespiratory uh, fitness, 25 NCG, uh, 1000 IU of vitamin D3, which we all know is important for uh, injury prevention and bone health, and then a bunch, of, uh, a bunch of other things. Bottom line, I'm a fan so far of the Unived Elite Recovery Mix. Now, onto the gels. I'm not quite as excited about the Unived gels, only because I think these gels are too intense for shorter races or shorter training runs, meaning they pack a punch. When you put this back, you know you're putting something back. And it's, um, it tastes good, but it's, it's just very rich. You know what I mean? And I could see these Unived gels being very, very effective for like 100 mile races, 50 mile races, 50Ks, longer races, especially toward the end when you're just totally depleted. Um, anyway, I just don't know if I would be using Unived gels too, too much in shorter distance races, shorter, meaning like a half marathon or a marathon, which I know is crazy to say, but when you've done longer races like I have, um, I could see these being good for later in the race. Okay, moving on. I am really loving though, the spring energy gels, okay? Here's the peanut butter flavor and then the icy mango on top peanut butter. I love these gels. They taste like real food, you know what I mean? Some gels, like I am not a fan of goo. Sorry if you're a fan of goo, but they just, I don't like gels that taste so sugary and it's probably cause I don't like candy that I don't like those types of gels. So, but spring, it just like this literally tastes like peanut butter and it goes down easy. Anyway, I'm really enjoying spring energy gels a lot a little bit more so than the Univet gels. Okay, moving on. Here we go. I know we're covering a lot kind of quick here, but thanks for sticking with me. All right, here we go to the watches. We got the Sun 25 and the Polar Vantage V. Two very different price points. You see it on your screen there. Uh, two different price points. And I'm gonna say, you know, the Sun 25 is more the introductory, um, introductory GPS watch. If you're just getting into running, this would be perfect easy to use, easy interface, easy menus. Um, I only lost GPS signal once or twice in the last three months, and then it picked it up again maybe a minute later. Um, now, pretty good syncing with Strava, okay? Pretty good syncing with Strava. And again, just simple, easy GPS watch to use. I'm a big fan, and it appears that the barometer and uh, or yeah, the barometer is accurate for tracking my elevation gain, so I like that a lot. I like it. Sun 25 bonus. I, I'm a fan. And I think the price point is pretty good uh, given what you get out of the watch. Okay, Polar Vantage V. Holy guacamole. I'm not a data guy. I'm not a heart rate guy. It has been pretty fun though to use this watch, I must say. I'm, I'm trying not to glance at the watch too much on training runs, um, but it was very effective 
uh, well, I should get us be careful what I say. Um, in Amsterdam, it was nice to be able to glance down at the watch. Now, I obviously was going hard, a little too fast at the beginning, uh, a little too fast, maybe way too fast, but um, it was fun to have the data, I must say, after the race, especially but the cadence I thought was pretty neat, so you don't need to wear a foot pod or a stride on your, on your shoe. Uh, now, how accurate are both of these watches? Like, take everything with a grain of salt. I think technology will just continue to improve as the years go by, but it appears that the data from this Polar Vantage V is pretty spot on. I'm just gonna say it. I think the heart rate is pretty spot on and um, altimeter as far as tracking the elevation gain and what else? Okay, oh, it has been a little bit of a pain in the neck sinking to Strava. In fact, the day of the Amsterdam Marathon, uh, it took, it didn't sink to Strava. I actually had to download from, it was like a five hour process trying to get my Amsterdam Marathon up to Strava, which I love doing to share with all of you who are on Strava. So it has struggled a little bit with sinking to Strava. I will just say that much. So far, so good. Now, um, price point, maybe a little high, okay? That's a pretty significant cost. But I would say like, once you buy this watch, like if you're okay with it, like just use this watch for five years or 10 years. So if I think it will last for a long, long time, okay? All right, moving on real quick. I'm gonna try and be concise here. So the Skechers Max Road 4 and the Asics Glide Ride. Again, I'm, I'm gonna throw up a few titles on the screen for you to, as far as some data about the shoes, but I will continue uh, the full running shoe review videos as soon as life, uh, calms down a little bit and I'm not traveling quite as much. Okay, Skechers Max Road 4. It's that knit upper. Um, the midsole is that hyperburst midsole. And then the outsole is uh, these little pods of rubber to help protect the outsole. I'm just gonna say a little concerned about the durability of the bottom of the Max Road 4. I foresee the shoe topping out at 400 miles. Is, is That's just based on the mileage I've already done. So, you know, if you want a shoe that goes the distance, this might not be for you. Also, it's a booty uh, style collar here that wraps around your ankle. I am not a fan. I don't like it. Um, I, I, I like the comfort, but I don't like how my, it just doesn't feel like my ankle is locked into the shoe. So I'm not a fan of the collar. Uh, the rest of the upper is just fine. Just the the uh, eyelet chain is great as far as lockdown. And the midsole, I must say, it feels a little bit like a Hoka. It has that rocker feel to it through the midsole. If you're a Hoka fan, I bet you'll like the ride of this this hyper, um, this Max Road 4 with a hyperburst midsole foam. So it's a maximalist shoe, road neutral. And today, I was finally thinking, well, I took the insole out of the Max Road 4 and put Spenco plus the insole plus this hyperburst midsole and my legs were so happy because yes, I am recovering from Amsterdam. They were so happy in this shoe. Like it was amazing. In fact, between now and New York City, I think this will be my go-to shoe just to help the legs feel better, recover better from Amsterdam. Okay, moving on to the Asics Glide Ride. Here we go, there it is, the Asics Glide Ride. Glide Ride. This is my first Asics shoe since high school. I think, and I think a lot of you would agree, that Asics is kind of catching up a little bit in the comfort category with all running shoes. A lot of running shoes have become a little more softer through the midsole, a little more comfortable through the gait cycle a little more forgiving. Um, and I think Asics is starting to figure it out. Like we need to soften up our midsoles. Well, this is still a firm ride, but compared to a lot of other shoes like Nike or uh, Hoka, of course. But I must say, overall, the, the midsole feels really, really good. Um, and oh, Mizuno and Asics, they are crushing the competition when it comes to the lifespan and durability of their running shoes. I'm telling you, the build quality of this shoe, you could get, I'm telling, I think you could get a thousand miles out of this shoe. So if you're someone that's pinching pennies and doesn't like to buy shoes every month or every two months, get an Asics or get a Mizuno if you can withstand the a little more firm ride. I'm telling you, like the build quality 
I can just, I can sense it and feel it as you hold it. Now it's a little, again, it's a little more stiff compared to other shoes, but I really appreciate how Asics and Mizuno, but how this Asics Glide Ride, it just will, I can tell it's gonna go the distance. So very, um, I'm excited about it. I'm excited to try, and yes, like that outsole, there it is, like no wear and tear after quite a few miles already in it. Um, and there's a few stats on your screen for the Asics Glide Ride with respect to weight and drop and price. Um, and I've, hopefully I, I put that up there for the Skechers Max Road 4 as well. And that is that. I know that was a very brief overview, but um, would I buy the Asics Glide Ride again? Yes, yes I would. The Skechers Max Road 4, maybe. Uh, probably because of this collar, I put it in the maybe category, but it was really nice today to help my legs recover. That is that. I hopefully, uh, hopefully that helps kind of summarize all the gear I've been talking about, or sorry, that I've been testing in the past two to three months. And thank you for your patience with respect to the full running shoe reviews. They will resume at some point, but it's probably going to be after New York, maybe even after Argentina. It's just like there's only there's only 24 hours in a day, as I like to say. So that is that. All right, I love you all. We're going to toss it back to. Two vlogs on the right and the left that talk about running gear in the past six months on the right and the left there. And we'll just, you know, I cannot wait to read your comments, by the way. I'm excited to do that. So, all right, see beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.